Let's talk about our kids' education today. I think that a lot of our subscribers and a lot of our viewers are other families, so they probably have a particular interest in understanding how we school our kids. And I would imagine that a lot of people assume we are world schoolers, meaning we just drag our kids all around the world and let them learn real world lessons as we do those travels versus having any kind of a formal curriculum, but that's not the case. No, it's the number one question that we get is, what do you do for your kid's school? And the other thing that they assume is that they're homeschooled. But like you said, we have a real curriculum for them that is provided by a school. It's a really neat program. It's called Ignite Learning Academy. They're headquartered here in the US, in Arizona actually, and it is an online only private school. And if at any point you wanna learn a little bit more about how we use the ILA program, you can go to followabc.com school and we've got more information there. We have a form so that you can request a one-on-one -on -one discussion with one of the school administrators. Feel free to use that. Now, Reagan, of course, is in high school. So she's doing in-person high school because she splits her time between our household and her mom's household. And she wanted to do in-person. Brooklyn and Colt, on the other hand, have complete freedom to do our world travels on a constant basis. Right, so it's about each kid and the right fit for them because with all of the trip planning we do and all the research we do before going out on a trip, we did the same thing for schools because one size does not fit all. We had to figure out the best fit for our family, our lifestyle, and our kids, and we're glad we found Ignite Light. Ignite Learning Academy. And we have the chance today to sit down with the head of school, Banji Denman, so that she can answer some questions specifically about Ignite Learning Academy and why it's a superior option. We already know why we chose them. I mean, yeah. we really spent, what, the better part of a year mm -hmm. considering options for Brooklyn and Colt. Yeah. Aaron did a lot of research and we landed on Ignite. It was our top choice across the entire nation of the US. So we're really excited to be enrolled in their school and we're really excited for the freedom that it affords our family to do all of these travels. And of course, we're really excited to talk to Banji today. And I think, Banji, uh, if we could just jump over to you and have our very first question be, I think the most obvious one, which is why do people choose Ignite Learning Academy maybe you know, over other online options or over traditional schools? Yes. Yeah, so the top reasons why parents choose Ignite Learning Academy other a brick, over in a brick and mortar school or another online school um, let's start, that's kind of two, two branches to that question. So over a brick and mortar school, I would say the number one reason is their life cho lifestyle choice. Um, whether that be that they are exploring and they want um, to go to the home that they have in Colorado and Texas and Florida and oh, we're gonna go to Spain right now or it could even be bigger than that. We have a lot of traveling families. We actually even have some traveling teachers um, where they basically half the year are on the road in their RV. And as long as they have a wonderful uh, internet capability or hotspot, you can do this truly from anywhere. You can school from anywhere. So that's their lifestyle choice of exploration, I would say is one of the biggest reasons why they wouldn't choose an in-person school because that really concretes you um, down to be like in a stationary spot, whereas this you can literally do from anywhere. Um, I would also say that many of our students choose online rather than brick and mortar because they're athletes. So that's a good portion of our population. They're athletic students. Um, or, you know, maybe it's musical or it's not always a, um, a sport that, that's got most of their attention, but there's an extracurricular activity that's a passion of theirs that lends them to be more flexible during the day for their practice time. So their commitment from their coaches and directors could be very much most of a traditional school day where they would be missing so much time in a brick and mortar, it, they would never be able to do that. Whereas here, they don't even necessarily have to go to the live sessions that we've given to them. They can always watch the recordings if they were at practice between nine and noon. Um, so a lot of athletes, a lot of people that have an exploration type lifestyle, um, versus brick and mortar. And then I would say third for brick and mortar reason, besides just preference, would be um, health and wellness. So many of our families that have come to us have someone in the family, if not the student, that have a, 
immunocompromised situation going on at home, um, or the student has an illness that's chronic and that they need some uh, medical attention in the home, or that they're seeking hospitalization many times outside of the home. So in those scenarios, I mean, what a gift. It's a beautiful gift to be able to be given online school as an option. So you're not missing school. You've got the flexibility, your teachers understand, and you're not, again, uh, Brick and mortar schools are very important and serve a purpose for many people, but there are many people that don't need that for their choice lifestyle or for what hand they've been dealt. Um, so this has been an actual gift to those families. Now I'm gonna go to the second branch of the question, which is specific to online schooling. Why, why would they choose Ignite Learning Academy over any other online school. And this one gets me excited. Um, I've been in online education for 18 years now out of my 23 in education. And there's a lot of good offered there, not a lot of great. Um, Ignite Learning Academy is great. We are significantly wonderful and we believe that we're cut above the, the rest. Um, so what's the differences? Um, at Ignite Learning Academy, we're private instead of public. There is a drastic difference um, to our customer. So people that come, I mean, there's a lot of differences when it gets into, you know, educational policy and stuff. Private, obviously, you have a lot more decisions that you can make without having to go through the state because we're not a state funded school. However, what you will see as a, a family and as students coming to a private school is you're going to see much, much smaller class sizes. So typically online school settings have very large, teachers in online school settings have very large class numbers, way more than even a brick and mortar setting. At our school, um, we are very, very intentional on keeping class sizes for mainstream education 20 or less. Um, and then as they actually go into special branches of our school for gifted or for special education, those with um, disabilities, it gets significantly lower than that. We're talking 10 students to a class or five. Um, the reason why that's so important to us um, again, through experience, we have learned that relationship between the student and the teacher or teachers is like a heartbeat to a body. It is so important for your students' full understanding and educational journey to be able to connect with their teacher and to be fully seen and understood by that teacher to truly do personalized education. So a lot of people use that buzzword, but to actually put it into action, we know that they need real relationship. So that can't happen when you're a number in an in a online list. Um, so that allows our teachers to really have the time with a small little nest of, of students that they have to really get to know every single one of those students, um, all their ins and outs, develop a rapport, things of that nature. Other online schools um, don't have that luxury because they, they need to get more seats in for the money. We, we don't need that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm tearing up. Oh, <laughs> well, be ready because they are going to, you're the mother. So as a mother, I understand. I have five children myself. It's so heartwarming when you have the village, you know, the school village that comes beside you and you know how much you love your babies, right? But when you have teachers who have such a heart for what they do and they will genuinely be interested in your children and want to take all of the like uniqueness of your kids and let it bloom, that if there's like something magic that happens. It's really cool. And Dr. Van San has created a school that allows this. I mean, I, I when I found out about this school that she was, we, we've been in existence for three school years now, and I've had the privilege to be here all three years. But when I heard her vision, I'm like, sign me up. I'll leave, I'll leave wherever I am and I will go because the vision is that good. It's really good for students. So we've, we've got a lot of good testimonies out there from, from families that you'll get to know where it's amazing. Wow, amazing. 
I mean, you guys really were the answer that we were looking for when it came to our children's education. Not all of the kids fit the mold and Colt definitely did not fit the mold. This was the answer we were looking for. That makes us so happy. That's what we like to hear because that's literally why we do what we do. So I, th I hope that helps with the online difference. I would say biggest difference is class size. That's gonna be the biggest one. And also, for example, um, many for, we spoke about testing. So we have specific assessments that we do. We have benchmark tests that we, um, use as like big assessments that benchmarks basically walk you through a year to show growth to any lay person that's going to lay eyes on it. And then we do lots of small assessing in, um, in between. Generally speaking, when you go outside to another online school or a public platform, you are going to have many, many intimidating assessments forced on you that aren't necessarily needed. It's again, something that's for um, other people's eyes, not necessarily parents, educators, even sometimes don't care about those assessments. We get rid of that here. We truly aren't going to over assess your child. Many of our students even have anxiety when it comes to assessment. You could have the brightest child ever, and then you force them to take this assessment, especially if it's in person, and they just, it's, it's just awkward. No longer are they at their homeschool setting. Now they're in a new place that seems, seems very sterile and uncomfortable. And so you're not even getting a true form of what they know and learn. We get rid of all of that. So many families love to hear that about us. They come and they say, wow, we don't have to do state standardized testing. Sign us up. Or, or, or especially the ones that explore and have that kind of a free lifestyle. You don't have to fly back home to Colorado to take your state test. Like, no, go to Bali because you don't have to be home in the month of April to test. Like, that's it's just a one more layer of freedom while we're still holding it accountable to get the testing done. So I think that's really great. Now, I'd like to switch directions a little bit and talk about the geographic component. It's a big selling point for us. But can you tell us a bit about the, the school in general? I mean, obviously students don't have to live in Arizona where you guys are headquartered, but what does the current school makeup look like? And where do you typically serve worldwide? Uh, what kind of a geographic reach do you guys have currently? What are you able to accommodate worldwide? Yes, okay, this is a good one. This is a fun one. So geographic limitations are really no. I really truly mean that. So at Ignite Learning Academy, I would say the majority of our students live in the United States. Um, we have Canada as well. We have six different countries though, where our students live. They don't actually just travel there. We have a lot of students that travel, but six different countries where they live. So for example, last week, um, preparing for graduation, I had some of our National Honor Society students speaking at our graduations and promotions. And two of those um, sweet students live in our international countries. One was in Morocco and one was in Romania. And they, you, you, we are creative on our meeting times. You know, it might be 7 a.m. my time in California, but it might be nine o'clock their time. You know, time zones um, will be a factor that you have to always take into accountability. So let's say a student has a 11 a.m. Pacific time course, and they're like, ooh, that's 3 a.m. my time. I don't know if I wanna go live. Fine, that's gonna be the only hindrance that they would probably run into would be time zone, I would say. Um, but that is a very easy workaround. Okay, let's go ahead and let's just watch the recording if I need to on that day. And I'll make sure that I go to a different session or I'll have office hour time with my teacher. And hey, my teacher knows me so well, he or she is going to work around my time zone to get me to work um, when it's a better time frame for me. So it's really, really neat for our other students too, who let's say I've got a student that lives in Idaho and hasn't ever left the farmhouse. I mean, that that's a situation as well sometimes. And they really get an opportunity to meet somebody who's traveling to France. And that student takes their webcam and shows all of the wonderful things that they've only seen in textbooks or online. 
or, you know, just get the opportunity. Like if a family was an exploratory family and they get to go all over and they're showing from their hotel room or from their condo, you know, the beach behind them. Every once in a while, we do get students, you know, from the city who have never seen the ocean. And now one of their classmates is showing them the beaches of Bali. Like that's super cool. So I would say there's zero limit to answer the question. The one hindrance could be time zone factors, but we've always found a way to work around it. That's great. And what about your ability to accommodate different types of learners, whether it's on the special education side or even the gifted and talented side? Yes. So we are a magnet, I would say, for special education students and for gifted students and also twice exceptional students. So I'll talk about those three. Ignite Learning Academy has a wonderful mainstream school, K through 12, but we have two large branches of our school. One is Spark, um, which is a program specifically developed K-12 for our gifted learners. And then we also have FIRE that is specifically a program with three tiers to it for students with significant special needs to um, the least restrictive environment, but I just need some resource help. Um, both of those, we really draw a lot of families in because they haven't been able to be serviced um, as they should be in other school platforms and they really are attracted to what we offer. So um, anyone that's ever had any dealings with a gifted student knows that they are profoundly uniquely made and they're wonderful. And a lot of times their little fires can get um, muted because they're either doing busy work or their class helpers or people don't understand them. And um, we've noticed and we've built platforms that really, again, I mean, no pun intended, we ignite them. So we, we really find out, well, what are your passions? Because normally that's what drives their gifted areas. There are certain areas that they're like high achievers in and very um, just, they, they blow your minds when you unleash that. So um, we have self-contained classrooms for them to be with their um, peers that are what we call intellectual peers. Um, sometimes those peers are a little bit older, sometimes they're a little bit younger, but they're on their same bandwidth, if that makes sense. And they really seem to bloom when they're put in a setting like that. And we give them challenges that are outside of the box um, based on their passion. So that would be our spark side. Their instruction is set up different. They do have direction, direct instruction courses that they're allowed to go to if they want to sit and have the teacher walk them through the curriculum. I would say about 50% take advantage of that. The other 50% of our gifted students don't want that. The academic comes extremely easy to them. They're kind of bored by that and it's like a little nuisance to them. So they just want to independently work on that stuff, but they still want that collaborative time to be able to explore all the things in the world in a in a different capacity than in like a textbook in, in a so we offer both to them depending on what type of learner they are our fire is for students with um special needs from significant to um high functioning and again we have three tiers oh we have just an amazing team running that branch of our school. And we have had students who parents felt locked, like we, we have to send them to a brick and mortar because we have no idea what we're doing. Like we need our student to go. And I'm like, as long as you have someone who's at the home that can be an earshot with these students, let go and let us take the rest. That is the only branch of our school where we do require mostly fully synchronous. So whereas most of the other branches have a good blend of asynchronous to synchronous, our fire program for our special needs students is pretty much, we give breaks, you know, we don't give them Zoom fatigue, but they very much are doing everything together. And there's almost very, very little asynchronicity that happens behind the scenes. And we take all the responsibility off of the parents. Um, so that's very attractive. And we like everybody to know that those are two very strong options for their students. That is fantastic. I mean, it really seems like there's room for everybody at Ignite. And I'm glad that you brought up the synchronous versus asynchronous mm -hmm. component because yeah. that's huge for us, like traveling to the other side of the planet 
or even if you have you know the, the other families who live on the other side of the planet if they were only doing the synchronous learning the live lessons mm -hmm. then they'd effectively be doing them in the middle of the night their time so having the recorded content is paramount but also just that ability to do the self-guided stuff like mm -hmm. I, I know that that's actually one of brooklyn's favorite components of right. this schooling now let's switch directions a little bit if it'd be okay with you i know that because you're a private school i think a lot of times that that very term has connotations of extreme expense right and ILA is much more approachable when it comes to tuition than most private schools because obviously you have a, a different cost matrix uh, due to the fact that you're an online school. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works and uh, just so that everybody understands whether or not this would be an affordable thing for them? I really like that. I really like the word approachable that you use. So at Night Learning Academy's tuition is extremely priced fair to the family. Um, our CEO and founder is not looking to become extraordinarily wealthy off of taking advantage of people's tuition. Really what the tuition is, it's a very affordable cost, especially if you look at other private schools, looking at Ignite Learning Academy's private school, we're like a third of the cost of most private schools, um, if, if not less. We're extremely affordable. It covers the cost of basically running the school, paying for your curriculum, paying for your teachers, and then all of the live supports. If you look at how much live support we offer to the student, and if you look at our tuition variances, anytime you see a tuition getting slightly higher, it's only because the, the level of live support majorly increases as a tuition price might gradually increase. Um, and all of the extracurriculars. That's one big thing that I like everyone to know. I get this question quite a bit from new families that are interested is, well, are you all a carding things? Or is it gonna cost extra if I wanna come do cooking club or coding or STEM or, you know, what is it? And no, absolutely not. It's a package deal. You can do as much as you want when you come here or as little as you want when you come here, but it's all the same cost. And I feel that it's a very, very affordable price. So. Compare, do a little bit of a Google search and compare the difference in costs of other private schools. And I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I do have one other question. And I think to us, online school sounds like a very obvious choice, but there is a very good reason. Every family that doesn't do it probably has a good reason or multiple reasons that they're not really into it. There can be some challenges associated with online school that you don't really have with traditional in-person school. What are some of those that you see most often and how does ILA kind of combat those, overcome them so that the experience is as positive and as valuable as possible? Number one, fear and myth of joining an online school is my student won't have any social um, exposure, that it's going to basically put them in a little cocoon and they're not going to be a normal functioning student, you know, once they graduate. It is a ginormous myth when it's done right. So I would say this, I would say that in order to make sure your student is a whole child, very well-rounded, you have a responsibility as their parent, just like any parent that's sending them to any school, to make sure outside of school they're exposed to whatever you choose as a family to expose them to, right? But while they're in school here, this is a school family. So it is very much, um, yes, I'm going to have my cohort of students that I'm learning with, um, and what those small class sizes, you know, we're not just getting to know our teacher very well. This also gives me the opportunity to know, oh, you know, I see Erin every day in class. So I am going to actually maybe side message her and be like, I, your hair looks really pretty today. I like that clip you're wearing. And um, what do you do this weekend? You know, there's, there's a chance for our students to get to chat and dialogue. And then we use a lot of breakout room time for them to learn to collaborate. That's a wonderful soft skill that students need to be very effective in today's world and life. And anything that they could do in person, they can do online now. Um, th that's the way our world is now. So very collaborative meetings um, can be held in platforms that are virtual. So 
that's that's something that whether it's for school work or whether it's just like I want to get to know you, there's lots of hangout times, lots of engagement, all of our clubs that they can use. Um, and then if a student's getting older and they're like, we don't necessarily want to just do a club, we like want to hang out. We have teams open for our students, so students can actually like learn to speak with each other in teams, lots of friendships, lots of groups. Teachers actually use that and actually encourage the students to use teams to get to know each other. They'll even build assignments with it. So the number one factor that I've heard over these years is always socialization. Um, and again, it's, it's something that when people see it in action, when it's an intentional piece of the school's mission, it's, it becomes obsolete. And I am a, if you haven't caught on to this, I'm a major extrovert. I thrive on people. And so, but I also choose to be online most of my day. So you better bet you that my school is going to be very engaging with each other. As a matter of fact, when, I, when I'm in interview processes with the teachers candidates that I'm looking to hire, if they don't have a certain presence online, I don't care what's on their resume. That's their major piece of their job is interacting and engaging online. And if you don't have that type of a personality, I don't really care what's up here. With all that said, I would say the biggest challenge is probably their socialization. That's how we overcome it. And then the next one really is engagement. So some students um, aren't necessarily always innately um, out of the gate, independent, go-getter, let me do my schedule type of kids. They need a little bit more prodding. They sometimes need to be urged to go to class or reach out and make a connection with their teachers or with their other classmates. They can even be shy or maybe they're very introverted. So my staff has very intentional professional development that they have gone through um, where I lead that. Of what do you do when you have a child who wants to literally like sit underneath the camera or never show their face or is afraid to speak. How do you get someone like that out of their shell to feel comfortable? How can you use the other students in the class so it's not always the teacher to engage them? And then when they start to have their butterfly moments, which is what I call it, oh, we're all texting each other on the side, IMing each other like, they're speaking, like they're presenting. They're, they just decided to take the lead in the class. Like it's amazing when that happens. So I would say biggest one, socialization and engagement level where they truly choose to be the ones that are, they're feeling empowered with their education, not just their learning coach constantly hounding them. Those are my two biggest that I've experienced over the 18 years. But at Ignite Learning Academy, we've got you covered. Like we're, those are the big, big ones that we watch for. So you're okay. If you've got a student like that, you'll be okay. And those are comments that we come across all the time is people asking about the socialization for our kids. So I'm really glad you addressed that. This is all fantastic info. I'm sure that it's very helpful to everybody who's watching this video today. And uh, really thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else you wanna say to, to the audience here, all of these potential new students and families, please go ahead. Cannot wait for you to join our ILA family. And thank you so much for your time today. I hope you enjoy your summer or I hope you enjoy whatever you're out there doing. And we can't wait to talk to you more and welcome you into our family. Excellent. Well, I hope this was helpful to everybody who is watching this. And please keep in mind, you can go to followabc.com school. And that's on our website. You might already be watching this video embedded on that page. So you don't have to go there again. But either way, it's a really good overview of what we get out of the ILA program. And then there's a good form on the bottom of the page that you can actually use to get directly into touch with an administrator from ILA. So to request a one-on-one, -on -one, please do that if you want any additional information. And always, if you have questions for us and why we chose ILA, then reach out. We are happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you have. But now we have to get back to work, so we will see you in the next episode. See you later. We are the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, 
kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.